come back to class. Now we are starting from objection and appeal process. What are the objection and appeal procedures we have in our task administrative uh, system? Okay. Yep. You know, <laughs> before the task payer could object, it therefore means that the task payer has uh, disagreed or the task payer disagrees with an assessment. Okay. So, and uh, for an objection to be, you know, to be relevant, okay, so it must have been given in notice, okay, so you must have given your objection or notice of objection in writing to the board within the time limit stated in the notice of assessment, which is usually uh, 30 days, okay, from the date of service of the assessment uh, on the task payer okay so the notice of objection should uh, state precisely the grounds of objection in fact let me state it categorically that we have uh, three conditions okay uh, conditions sorry conditions for an <coughs> objection to be relevant so remember we just discussed uh, the types of assessments we have we have apart from the self assessment that taxpayer assess themselves based on what they feel it is appropriate uh, to pay as tasks you know we have additional assessment government assessment turnover uh, basis or deemed assessment approach so now all of these apart from the self assessment uh, could uh, could make uh, the taxpayer object uh, to the uh, to the assessment, you know. Uh, so uh, just like when the taxpayer submit the assessment, the taxpayer will have to review whether it is uh, they are satisfied or it is appropriate. Okay. So also when the taxpayer raise an additional assessment or raise an assessment, the taxpayer has the right under the tax law. So object to whatever assessment they have raised, even in the opinion of the uh, taxpayer, it is what it is unjustifiable. Okay, so and uh, for this appeal, uh, sorry, for this objection to be relevant, it must be in writing. It must be in writing. Okay, so the grounds, the grounds of objection. The grounds of objection should uh, be clearly stated. The grounds of objection of objection should be clearly uh, stated, and uh, so conditions for an objection to be valid. Okay, so let's use valid instead of relevant. Conditions for an appeal. Ah, sorry. <laughs> for an objection to be to be valid okay so one it must be in writing uh the grounds of objection uh, must be stated and it must be within within uh, the uh, time limits uh, stated or specified in the uh, notice of uh, assessment in the notice of assessment okay so if a valid objection is made and the board <coughs> will attempt to settle the disagreement with the taxpayer if an agreement is reached the assessment will be amended accordingly and a notice of amended assessment will be served on the taxpayer but if no agreement is reached then the board will give a notice of refusal to amend to the taxpayer and uh, this notice of refusal to amend which is otherwise known as a nura notice of a refusal to amend okay so otherwise known as nora okay uh they probably lead uh, okay uh lead the taxpayer or uh, force the taxpayer to approach the uh, appeal tribunal okay because once the uh, tax authority uh, issue a notice of refusal to amend 
or serve a taxpayer a notice of refusal to amend the taxpayer if so wishes can appeal against the assessment uh within uh 30 days okay task appeals okay so the taxpayer if so wish may appeal within 30 days from the date of service of that notice so all appeals shall in the first instance be sent to the body of appeal uh, commissioners okay all appeals shall in the first instance be sent to the body of appeal commissioners except where there is no such body established or where it has been specifically provided in the arts that such shall be such shall be to the state high court so uh however a late appeal may be accepted upon an application being made to the task appeal tribunal or the high court as appropriate if there is a reasonable excuse for the delay if there is a reasonable excuse uh, for the delay okay so under task appeal we have the task appeal uh tribunals uh tribunal rather we have the task appeal tribunal okay so in the administration of taxes uh, one of the functions of the uh task administrator is to raise notice of assessment and i just mentioned that if the taxpayer is not satisfied with his uh, notice of assessment that is when a taxpayer is aggrieved by an assessment or demand notice upon him by the service uh he or uh, the aggrieved taxpayer okay uh we may what okay we said we said it starts from uh objecting to the said assessment okay but upon the receipt of a uh, notice of refusal to amend then the taxpayer may like, appeal against such decision or assessment or demand notice within the stipulated period of time to the tab task appeal tribunal which is usually uh, within a period of 30 days from date on which a copy of the uh, uh, notice is received okay so uh, so this must be accompanied uh, by such fee as may be described or prescribed provided that the tribunal may entertain an appeal after the expiry of the said period of 30 days if it is satisfied that there was sufficient cause uh, for the delay so where a, uh, a, a, a where a notice of appeal is not given by the uh, taxpayer or by the aggrieved person within the period specified as required the assessment or demand uh, notices shall become or shall become uh, final and conclusive shall become final and then conclusive shall become final and conclusive and the service may charge interest and penalties in addition to recovering the outstanding tax liabilities which remain unpaid from any person through proceedings at the tribunal in essence where the service is aggrieved by the non-compliance by a person in respect of any provision of the task laws it may appeal to the tribunal where the person is resident giving notice in writing through the secretary to the appropriate zone of the tribunal yes what we are saying here is that it no it is not the taxpayer uh that uh, can file an appeal against an assessment alone okay uh sorry why it is the taxpayer uh oh sorry let's put it this way why the law allows the taxpayers okay that is aggrieved of an assessment of a demand notes notice received from uh the frs okay so can appeal against uh this uh notice or demand notice from the frs through the tax appeal tribunal the frs too can what can file an appeal against the taxpayer that have not been complying okay so against the taxpayer that has not been complying with the relevance or uh, with the respective uh, provisions of the task laws so specifically uh, section 59 of the federal inland revenue service establishment act provides for the establishment of the tribunal why the fifth schedule why the fifth schedule uh, to the federal inland revenue service establishment act makes provision for the jurisdiction okay so authority and procedure of a task appeal tribunal so according to this fifth schedule uh uh pursuant to section uh, 59 or uh, subsection one 
of this act that is the federal revenue service establishment act there shall be established a tax appeal tribunal hearing after referred to as the tribunal hearing after referred to as the tribunal okay so to exercise the jurisdiction powers and authority conferred on it by or under this schedule it also states that the minister may by notice in the federal gazette specify the number of zones matters and uh, places in relation to which the tribunal uh, may exercise uh, jurisdiction are we together so now i will <coughs> discuss uh what uh, would it, uh what the task appears on uh all about now let's look at the composition of the uh, task appeal commissioners composition of the task appeal commissioners composition of the task appeal commissioners uh, one <coughs> Uh, a task appeal uh, tribunal shall consist of uh, five members. Task appeal tribunal shall consist of five members referred to as the task appeal commissioners. Referred to as the task appeal commissioners to be appointed, to be appointed, that's appointment, to be appointed by the Minister of Finance, to be appointed by the Minister of uh, finance to be appointed by the minister of finance and then also the chairman for each soon the chairman for each zone the chairman for each zone shall be a legal practitioner shall be a legal practitioner shall be a legal practitioner who has been qualified who has been qualified to practice so that's our qualification so a is our composition b is our for qualification okay so uh the channel for each zone shall be a legal practitioner who has been qualified to practice uh for a period of not less than for a period of not less than 15 years with cognate with cognate experience with cognate experience in task legislation with cognate experience in task legislation and then task matters in task legislation and task matters okay so a chairman shall preside at every sitting of the tribunal and in his absence the members shall appoint one of them to be the chairman the quorum at any sitting okay quorum the quorum at any sitting of the tribunal shall be three members the quorum okay the quorum at any sitting the quorum at any sitting shall be what three uh, members a person uh, shall not be appointed okay or shall not be qualified for appointment as a task happy commissioner unless he is knowledgeable in the field of law accountancy economics position in nigeria as well as persons that have shown capacity in the management of trade or business or a retired public servants in task administration uh, a task happy commissioner shall hold office for a term of three years renewable for another term of three years renewable for another term of three years only and no more from the date on which he assumes his office or until he attains the age of 70 years whichever is earlier so as often as may be necessary task appeal commissioners shall meet uh task appeal commissioners shall meet to hear appeals in the jurisdiction or zone assigned to that tribunal okay so we are a task appeal commissioner as direct 
or indirect financial interest in any appeal pending before the tribunal or where the taxpayer is uh, or was a claim of that tax appeal to commissioner in his professional capacity, he shall declare such interest to the other tax appeal commissioners and refrain from sitting as meeting for the hearing of that uh, appeal. Are we together? Okay, so now let's look at the uh, jurisdiction of the tribunal. Jurisdiction. Jurisdiction of the tribunal. <coughs> So paragraph 11, paragraph 11 of the fifth schedule, paragraph 11 of the fifth schedule to the Federal Land Revenue Service Establishment Act sets out the jurisdiction sets out the jurisdiction of the task appeal tribunal and these are one the power to adjudicate on disputes or and uh, controversies arising from uh, the following task laws uh, companies income tax act uh, cap c21 no Federation of Nigeria 2004. You have the Personal Income Tax Act, CAP uh, P8, No Federation of Nigeria 2004, and then and uh, 2011. And then you have the Petroleum. petroleum Profit Tax Act Cap uh, P13 Law of Federation of Nigeria 2007. We have the Capital Gains Tax. We have the Capital Gains Tax Act Cap C1 Law of Federation of Nigeria 2004. And then uh, any other law, and any other words, and any other law contained in or specified in the first schedule to this act, or other laws made or to be made from time to time by the National Assembly. So the execution of this uh, of its jurisdiction, however, that is the task tribunal, must apply such provisions of the task laws referred to um, in uh, paragraph 11 sub paragraph 1 as may be applicable in the determination or resolution of any dispute or controversy before it. So uh, confirming the jurisdictional power of the tribunal regarding the administration of the personal income tax act uh, section 60 section 60 section 60 uh, of the personal income tax act as amended uh, by section as amended by section 14 of the personal income tax act okay um, number 20 of 2011 provides that the tax appeal tribunal established Pursuant to section 59 of the Federal Land Revenue Service Establishment Act 2007, shall have the power to entertain all cases arising from the operation of this act. So, uh, hence, a tax person being aggrieved by an assessment to income tax made upon him, having failed to agree with the relevant tax authority in manner provided in subsection 3 of section 58 of the Personal Income Tax Act, may appeal against the assessment on giving notice as provided within 30 days after the date of service of the refuser of the relevant tax authority to amend the assessment as uh, desired. So nevertheless, when in the course of its adjudication, 
the tribunal discovers evidence of possible criminality, the tribunal shall be obliged to pass such information to the appropriate criminal prosecuting authorities, such as the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, or of any state of the Federation, or any other relevant law enforcement agency, such as EFCC. Are we together? So now let's look at the powers of the tribunal. Powers of the tribunal. Powers of the tribunal. Okay. So the tribunal for the purpose of discharging its functions as noted uh, under the fifth schedule to the Federal Land Revenue Service Establishment Act has the power to summon okay and enforce has the power to summon and enforce the attendance has the power to summon and enforce the attendance of any person the power to summon and enforce the attendance of any person and examine and examine him on art to an oath to require the discovery require the discovery and the um, production of documents uh, three receive evidence of affidavits for call for examination call for examination of uh, witnesses or documents call for examination of witnesses or documents five review its decision review its decision six dismiss an application dismiss an application for default dismiss an application for default or deciding matters or deciding matters as party and um, set aside any order or dismissal of any application for default or any other past that it expert and then do anything which in the opinion of the tribunal is incidental or ancillary to its functions under the fifth schedule to the uh, federal Land revenue service establishment act uh, procedure before the task at the tribunal what are the procedure okay procedures procedures before the task uh, before the task appeal tribunal okay so there are rules and procedures guiding the tribunal in the discharge of its duty so uh, paragraph 15 paragraph 15 of the fifth schedule to the federal revenue service establishment act okay lays down the fact that as often as may be necessary the task commissioners shall meet to hear appeals in the jurisdiction or zone assigned to that tribunal. So, where a task appeal commissioner has a direct or indirect financial interest in any appeal pending before the tribunal, or where the taxpayer is or was the client of that task appeal commissioner in his professional capacity, uh, the commissioner must declare such interest to the other task appeal commissioners and refrain from sitting in any meeting for the airing of that appeal. So, prior to the sitting on a matter on task matter, the secretary to the tribunal must give seven clear days notice to the service and to the appellants of the date and place fixed for the airing of each appeal except in respect of any adjourned hearing for which the task appeal commissioners have fixed the date at their previous hearing. So all notices, documents other than decisions of the tribunal may be signified under the hand of the secretary while all appeals before the task appeal commissioners must be heard in public. The owners of proving the, that the assessment complaint of its excessive shall be on the appellant. Okay, that is the taxpayer. So according to section 15, uh, sorry, according to paragraph 15, subparagraph 7, at the end of, a, of any appeal, 
if the representative of the service proves to the satisfaction of the tribunal, uh, okay, proves to the satisfaction of the tribunal hearing the appeal in the first instance that the appellant has for the year of assessment concerned failed to prepare and deliver to the service returns required to be furnished under the relevant provisions of the task laws mentioned uh, in paragraph 11 and the appeal is frivolous or vexatious or is an, is an abuse, abuse of the appeal process or, is it, or it is expedient to require the appellant to pay an amount as security for prosecuting the appeal. The tribunal may adjourn the hearing of the appeal to any subsequent day and order the appellant to deposit with the service before the day of the adjourned hearing an amount an account of the task charged by the assessment on the appeal equal to the task charged upon the appellant for the proceeding for the preceding year of assessment or one half of the task charged by the assessment on the appeal whichever is lesser plus a sum equal to 10 percent of the said amount or the said deposits and if the appellant fails to comply with the order the assessment against which he has appealed shall be confirmed and the appellant shall have no further right of appeal with respect to that assessment. Okay, so after giving the pe uh, parties an opportunity of being heard, the tribunal may confirm, reduce, increase, or, or what? May confirm, reduce, or increase the, uh, or annul, okay, or annul the assessment, or make any such order as it deems fit. However, every decision of the tribunal must be recorded in writing by the chairman. And subject to the provisions of paragraph 16, uh, paragraph 16 of the fifth schedule, okay, of the fifth schedule to the Federal Land Revenue Service, out a certified copy of such decision shall be supplied to the appellant or service or the service by the secretary upon a request made within 30 days of such decision, according to the Act, whereupon the area of an appeal, no accounts, books, or records relating to profit were produced or. Uh, on behalf of the appellant, such accounts, books, or records were so produced but rejected by the tribunal on the ground that it had been shown to its satisfaction that they were incomplete or unsatisfactory. The appellant or his representative at the hearing of the appeal has neglected or refused to comply with a notice delivered or sent to him by the secretary to the tribunal without showing any reasonable cause, or the appellant or any person employed whether confidentially or otherwise, by the appellant or his agents, other than his regular practitioner or accountant acting for him in connection with his liability to task, has refused to answer any question put to him by the tribunal without showing any reasonable cause. The chairman of the tribunal shall record particulars of the same in his written decision. Are we together? So then we have appeals to the High Court. We have appeals to the high court appeals to the high court okay so where any of the parties before the tribunal is dissatisfied with the decision of the tribunal such party may appeal to the high court and in a, uh, in line with the paragraph 17 of the fifth schedule in line with paragraph 17 of the fifth Schedule of the FIRSEA. Okay, so appeals lie from the Tass Appeal Tribunal to the Federal High Court and subsequently to the Court of Appeal and then Supreme Court. Okay, so uh, the paragraph states any person dissatisfied with the decision of the tribunal constituted under this schedule may appeal against any such decision on the point of law to the Federal High Court upon giving notice in written to the Secretary to the tribunal within 30 days after the date on which such decision was given. A notice of appeal 5 plus 1 to subparagraph 1 of this paragraph shall set out all the grounds of law on which the appellant's case is based. If the service is dissatisfied with the decision of the tribunal, it may appeal against such decision to the Federal High Court on points of law by giving notice in writing as specified in subsection 1 of this section to the secretary within 30 days after the date on which such decision was given, just like the taxpayer. So upon receipt of a notice of appeal under subparagraph 1 and 2 of this paragraph, the secretary to the tribunal shall cause the notice to be given to the chief registrar of the Federal High Court along with all the exhibits tendered at the hearing before the tribunal. Then the chief judge of the Federal High Court may make rules uh, providing for the procedure in respect 
of appeals made under this act and until such rules are made, the Federal High Court rules relating to hearing of appeals shall apply to the hearing of an appeal under this act. So as noted or as stated earlier, the role of the court on appeal is limited to a question of law. So a court has no jurisdiction of on a question of fact and then the court cannot reverse an earlier decision simply because the appellant appellate judge would have reached a different conclusion. So further appeal against the decision of the Federal High Court at the instance of either party shall lie uh, to the Court of Appeal and subsequently to the uh, Supreme uh, uh, okay, to the Supreme Court. Are we together? So uh, thank you for being in class. Let's go on break and when we come back, we shall conclude the other part of this same topic. Thank you.